Many people would argue that the police are a necessary part of our lawful society. Some people can't imagine a society without them. But what is the true purpose of the police? Do they really prevent crime and stop criminals? Or are they simply a tool of corrupt governments? In this video, I will discuss the pros and cons of an organised police force. Step out of the vehicle, son. When I was about 17, I was sitting in the back seat of my mate's car with a few other mates. He was about the same age and had just recently received his driver's license. Just as he approached an intersection, the traffic light turned yellow and he continued through. It seemed reasonable and not at all dangerous, but the police trailing behind us didn't think so. The police pulled him over and asked him to step out of the vehicle. I misheard this and thought that they had asked all of us to get out. Actually, they didn't ask any of us to get out, so I don't really know what they said. I took off my seatbelt and started to open the door. A police officer rushed to the door and yelled, Stay in the car! Stay in the car! I thought I had just committed the crime of the century. He then went on to question me why I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. I told him that I thought he asked us all to get out. And then the tirade of abuse came. I just sat back and took it. He threatened to write me a ticket, but I continued to tell him that I was wearing my seatbelt before he asked me to step out of the vehicle. He let me off with a warning. In this situation, if society had police or not, would it have changed the outcome of going through the yellow light? Not at all. My friend wasn't endangering anyone, and even if I wasn't wearing a seatbelt, that wasn't going to hurt anybody apart from potentially myself. So why did the police feel it necessary to pull us over and potentially escalate a situation? They could have been endangering themselves over something so trivial. If they left us alone, nothing would have occurred. We would have driven on our merry way. But pulling over a group of strange teenagers in a vehicle could have resulted in a much worse outcome. We probably all have a police story or two. Sometimes I find police to be quite friendly, but then at other times they've been extremely on edge. Some police are constantly in a state of anxiety, waiting for the next criminal to lash out at them. They can't seem to turn off that switch and consequently treat everyone like a criminal. They would argue that it is for their own safety, but quite frankly, most people aren't criminals, so why should we be treated as such? Respect in the police academy. As I have mentioned it previously, I was in the Queensland Police Service for a short time between 2007 and 2008. The first thing that I noticed in the academy was that our police sergeants didn't treat us very well. I guess they were trying to show us that they were our masters and we were their underlings. One afternoon, I was speaking with one of the female sergeants, and I mistakenly used the term police force. She immediately started abusing me, saying, We are not a force. We are a service. In front of everybody, she went and told another sergeant, and they started laughing at me. They seemed to have forgotten that I was one of their peers, but instead treated me like a naughty little schoolboy. At 28, I was an older recruit. I was university qualified and had worked overseas for a number of years. For them to treat me in such a way, I found it unforgivable. However, I forced myself to stay calm and decided to write that off as one little hiccup. Another time, I was walking around the academy with my hands in my pockets. An overzealous sergeant ran up to me and started yelling, Why do you have your hands in your pockets? Are you trying to hide something from me? He even went on to tell me that only criminals and lazy people walk around with their hands in their pockets. I started to wonder what sort of organisation have I got myself involved in. They seem to make up their own crazy rules and abuse anyone who dares break them. Another example. I had to go to another sergeant's office with regard to some training I was participating in. He was sitting down behind a desk and had a single chair in front of his desk. I walked in and introduced myself. He then looked at me, looked at the chair, looked back at me, obviously giving me the impression that I should sit down. So I sat down. Boy, was that a mistake. He immediately stood up, raised his voice and said, Did I tell you you could sit down? What the hell are you doing? By this stage, I was getting very sick of being yelled at for making very innocent mistakes. So I decided to stand up for myself by saying, You implied I could sit down by looking at me and looking at the chair. If that wasn't your intention, you shouldn't have been looking at the chair, not saying anything. That opened up a can of worms. He called in a couple of other sergeants and told them what happened. They started laughing with one another and made me look like a real fool. I could go on with lots of other examples of a severe lack of respect in the police academy. However, I think I've made my point. Police don't even treat each other with respect. How can we possibly expect new police recruits to go out into the public and treat normal people nicely? Whoever is responsible for police culture has done a really bad job. 
You don't make good police by abusing them. Sure, there were a couple of nice sergeants in the academy, but in general, I found most of them to be real mean individuals with little regard for other people's feelings. I think I would have made a really good police officer, but thanks to a culture of disrespect, I was forced to leave. The police service always say they want talented individuals from all walks of life, but as long as they treat their recruits like this, there's no way they're going to achieve their goal. Purpose of the police The police themselves would say that their job involves public safety and stopping criminals. Politicians would say that the role of the police is to enforce laws, but a problem arises when the laws the police are enforcing are unfair or corrupt. Who makes these laws? Politicians, of course. Even in Australia, laws are created that often do not meet the expectations of the public at large. They are mainly created to protect a select few, for example, wealthy people. Certain crimes are obvious, things like murder, rape, theft, assault, etc. We don't need laws to tell us that these acts are wrong. If I go around with a knife, stabbing innocent people, then we don't need the police to tell us that this is wrong. Society would not tolerate this, and eventually a group of people would stop me. However, a law that states you cannot ride a bicycle without a helmet is quite ridiculous. Yes, this is a law in Australia. If there were no police, would a group of people gather together and try to hunt me down for not wearing a helmet? Of course not. But today in modern Australia, police will stop you if you are not wearing a helmet and give you a fine. Crime prevention. It is often said that police are there to prevent crime, but my question is, can they really prevent it? In some situations they can act as a deterrent. For example, if there is a police presence at a football game, then you could argue that spectators would be less likely to commit a crime. However, if you think of the average murderer, they're not murdering people in places where there are police. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics in 2014, two-thirds of murders occurred in a residential location. Let's face it, most residential locations don't have a police officer located nearby, so police can simply not prevent murder. Sure, they can hunt down the murderer using their detectives and forensic teams, but their mere existence cannot prevent people from killing one another. Similarly, police cannot prevent rape, theft, assault, or any other crime for that matter. Unless they are physically located near the criminal, they simply cannot do anything. Furthermore, most criminals at the time of the crime truly believe that they will not get caught, or they're so out of their mind that they aren't thinking of the consequences anyway. Police reports. Another job of the police is to take reports. For example, my friend's car was broken into and some money and DVDs were taken. He went down to the local police station and reported the crime. What did the police do? Take a report, of course. What's the outcome of these reports 99% of the time? Absolutely nothing, apart from more paperwork. Do you think police put down everything to track down the DVD thief? Of course not. I think the goal of the police report is to make the public think that the police are doing something when they're really not. I used to work as a cleaner in a dental surgery. One day, we came in and noticed the toilet window was smashed in. We called the police, who told us not to touch anything. An hour or so later, a detective rocked up, put on his gloves, and dusted the can of air freshener and window for fingerprints. He told us not to touch anything until after the investigation was complete. Weeks went by, and I remember seeing the same can of air freshener still in the same location. The result of all this? Nothing, of course. Does anybody really think that the detective did anything more than run the fingerprints back at the station? After returning a negative result, he probably moved on to his next case. The whole point of sending out detectives was to make it look like that the police were actually doing something. It's a case of perception is everything. Are police necessary? In general, people do not go around hurting one another. If people's needs are met, for example food, shelter, clothing, transport, then they have no need to commit crime. See my video on basic income. If you have everything you need, then there is no need to go out and rob people. Drunk or drugged people sometimes commit crime, but they do it despite a police presence. Some of the assaults that occur late at night due to alcohol intoxication will always occur, unless we can somehow prevent people from drinking too much. Police have no effect on the behaviour of drunk people. I've seen it for myself in the Brisbane CBD on a Saturday night. My first instinct is that police are generally unnecessary and are just costing taxpayers a lot of money. They are there mainly to keep the powers that be feeling safe. Furthermore, police are given too much power. In Australia at least, police carry guns. 
All it takes is a couple of bad apples in the police force, and then innocent people can feel threatened and uncomfortable around them. I've seen enough videos of police brutality on the internet that it's almost a reason in itself to not have police. There are a few particular situations where a police-like force would be useful. For example, a homicide team that has the sole duty of tracking down murderers and the like. For other situations, like at a football match, security staff would suffice. These could be privately funded by the stadium or the football organisation. Already pubs have private security staff manning their doors. Ultimately, we should be striving for a society where there is no need for a police force. Whether this involves reducing the number of laws, implementing a basic income, legalising drugs, or a mixture of all of these, the police force are really just a remnant of an old style of governance. Throughout history, governments have maintained their power by imposing and enforcing often cruel laws. Our modern day society is not much different. It will take time, but eventually we'll wake up and realise that nobody should have a monopoly on power.